All that we have in the guest is the remainder of the church. We ask that you would come and join us.
before we get real comfortable, if you can, just stand on your feet and put your hands toward him. As we enter into a another level of this worship, if you can, if you can, not just lift up your hands. Father, we say thank you. We don't have to invite you in this place. You're already here. We thank you, Lord, for having moved the way you moved and spoken the way you've spoken. We know, Lord, somebody came in this place tonight. You've already told it's going to be all right. We say thank you, Lord. And we pray right now that you just continue to move in the hearts and minds of your people that have gathered in this place. And God, we pray for those who are on the way. Some of them uh, are getting dressed or are on the way. But we pray, God, that you just electrify this environment right now. So that when somebody pulls on the lot, they already know that the presence of the Lord is moving in this place. Electrify this place, Lord, so there'll be a light that's shining all on the outside of this brick and mortar. So that somebody who is riding down the street on the way somewhere else might just pull in and just ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Electrify this place tonight. Energize it by the power of your Holy Spirit. That we may know, Lord, tonight that we had an encounter with you. And we pray, God, as we have this encounter with you on this last night of 2019, that you just move in us in a way, Lord, that we walk into this new year with full expectation that you're going to be God in our lives. And that we're going to follow you all the way. Move in this place, Lord. So that somebody that came in down will lift, leave out of here lifted up. Move in this place, Lord. That somebody that came in your word will leave out knowing that you've already got it worked out. Move in this place. So that somebody that's sick, Lord, will be made well. Move in this place. That somebody who is unsaved will get saved tonight. Move in this place. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody just say the name of Jesus? Don't say it like you mean it, Jesus. Let me remind somebody, that's a name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus, by whose stripes we are healed. In the name of Jesus, the only name by which we may be saved. Move, Lord. Move, Holy Spirit. Move right now, Lord. Move right now, all over the building. Somebody came in the cold, heat them up. Somebody came in here different, Lord. Let them engage right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that every word that's said tonight will glorify you. Every song that is sung will glorify you. When your word is preached, let it glorify you. Let somebody's heart be touched tonight that they may, may shout hallelujah that has never shouted hallelujah before. Let somebody who has never stood for their feet and lifted up their hands move and, and jump up and say, God, you sure are good. Help us to be aware of all that you've done. Help us to know that we didn't make it through this year by ourselves, or by our own power. But we only made it because of your grace and your mercy. Your goodness and your mercy accompanied us all the way through January, all the way through February, all the way through March, April, and May. Goodness and mercy didn't take a break in the summertime, but June and July and August, goodness and mercy were right there. Every morning we got a new dose of grace and mercy. August, September, October, Lord, you were, you were right by our side. And then November came, hallelujah. December, now here we are. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy didn't take off when we were in shit rooms. Goodness and mercy were on either side. Grace and mercy were from the head to the top and did the foot of the beds every night. Thank you, Lord. So now, Lord, have your way in us. Help us not to hold back in the praise and glory that's in our heart. Let us give it all to you because you are worthy. Let me know he's worthy. You're worthy. You deserve it. And we decide to give it to you that have your way. In Jesus' name. We say thank you. Thank you. You've been so good. Thank you. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah. If you know God has been good to you today, give him some strong praise. I'm talking about giving him some 365 days. God, you've been good to me, great. Somebody just shout hallelujah. Somebody just shout glory to his name. I feel all right. 
good to God. He's been good. Tell your neighbor, help your neighbor. I said, neighbor, ain't it been good? Has he been good? I said, I need some other verb. He said, has he been, has he been good to you? He's been good to me. And I'm glad, I'm glad I serve my God. I'm mighty glad to be here tonight. I'm mighty. Lord have mercy. I'm mighty. Mighty glad. What a difference a year the Lord makes. Amen. Glory to his name. We want to thank God for both of these congregations that are here and other congregations. We got representatives from other congregations, but I want to give God praise for three of them tonight. We are grateful for the First Baptist Church of Stewardship. We're grateful for the Acts of Faith Baptist Church. Let's give God praise for Acts of Faith. We're grateful for the St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church. We're grateful for our guests and visitors that are here tonight from anywhere else. Make yourselves at home tonight. As we leave this ship going to the new year, let's make ourselves at home because God is a mighty good God. And he deserves all of our praise. Amen. We're going to move on to service. We had a good time and devotion and praise and worship, but I'm not going to hold it too long. Somebody say, y'all warm in here? That's what's warm in here. Holy Spirit move. How about that? That's what it's heating us up in here. And I believe I'm sweating here. I don't know. 49 degrees outside, but we're in this place worshiping the Lord. Amen. Amen. So the music ministry gets sweet. What a, I, I, somebody gave me a program. Somebody read out the program. All for time. I think I did that. You said scripture? Okay. All right. I have been here the wrong time. Y'all excuse me. Blame it on the head. Uh, we're going to do our offering tonight. Amen. If you don't have your cash, checkbook, debit card, we have, um, what we got? Sister Simpson. Text to give. We got um, Saint, uh, cash, cash app. What's the cash app? I, somebody, does anybody know the cash app? That's why we need. We're going to get this moving. We got deacons from St. Peter, First Baptist Church Stewardship here. God knows that you forgive us, so whatever the Lord is purpose in your heart, let's give it to Him now. Let us all stand. We let out by the usher ministry that are here tonight.
who's still in the miracle working business. You see a miracle tonight. Come on, you should do better than that. You ought to give God true glory, true praise. For we exalt the Lord on tonight for his goodness, for his greatness. And, and if you can just thank God for his miracle, guess what? If he's doing miracles with Pastor Thomas, he can do miracles for you. So somebody ought to give it God and man's praise for the miracles that are coming your way. Come on, don't panic him. Don't panic him. Give him real glory. Give him real praise. And can you thank God for the miracles he performed in 19? Somebody wasn't supposed to be here, but you're still here. Somebody was supposed to have a car accident, supposed to be buried, but you're here this morning, standing, or this evening, standing on your feet. Somebody told you you were going to be dead, but you're still here. Come on, give God some real. Some of y'all, I'm waiting for somebody to get out of your seat, because we're going to be talking. Some of y'all shouldn't be sitting here tonight. But by the grace of God, the grace of God, you're still here. Shake somebody's hand and say, I'm still here. And you are too. So we ought to give him some glory. We ought to give him some praise. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. You really should need a praise team tonight. You really should. You should really need a preacher to pep you up. Because if it had not been, that should make somebody shout out there. If it had not been, for who? For who? On whose side? Where would I be? Come on, come on, where would I be, Brad? Where would I be? Hallelujah. 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 I give God all the Lord and all the honor. And I'm grateful to be here tonight to be with my friends, Pastors Thomas and Hampton. And every time I see Pastor Thomas now, I just think God works miracles. And what I tell my church. We ought to praise God for miracles He's done for other people like He's done it for us. Praise God for the miracles He's done in somebody else's life like He's did it, like He'll do it for your family. Your spouse, your child. You gotta learn how to give God praise for other people's blessings. And guess what? If you're around people who have already been blessed, you stick around long enough and some of them drop down on your neighborhood as well. So don't hate, participate. And give God glory for blessing other people. Amen. Y'all stop real quick, man. Y'all keep me going. Stop real quick. And I'm not the preacher. Amen. I'm not the preacher, but I'm going to introduce the preacher who's going to come and break the bread of life on tonight. Aren't you glad to be able to receive a final word? And an introductory word to 2020. How many of y'all need a word from the Lord on tonight? And if you came ready to receive, there will be a word given to you from the voice and heart of my dear friend, Pastor Clarence Hampton. You can see he brought his amen corner with him today. Amen. But we give God praise for Pastor Hampton. He is the pastor, a.k.a. the captain of the First Baptist Church of Stewardship in Atlanta, Georgia. We thank God that he loves the Lord most importantly. But he loves to preach the gospel simple, full, and free. And I'm not going to spend much time introducing him because we just want to hear what God has to say. Amen. But I guarantee you, if you pray, uh -huh. he'll preach. Right. And even if you don't have him prayed, he's still going to preach. Right. 
I need to ask, is there anybody here who needs a word from the Lord that's tailor-made just for you? I want you all to stretch forth your hands to our preacher, our pastor for this hour. And we want to encourage him. And if you don't mind just repeating these words, Pastor Hampton, we've come to hear a word from the Lord. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. And if you believe God is going to use Pastor Hampton in a mighty way, give God praise on print. Give God advance praise. Believing and trusting that God is going to use him in a mighty way. After the choir is sung, the next voice that you will be from none other than the very fine pastor of the First Baptist Church of Stewardship of Atlanta, Pastor Clarence Hampton the second. Hear ye him. And all of God's people said amen. amen.
true witness. I'm a true walking testimony of God knowing my name. And you see, Pastor Thomas, I'm a true testimony too that God knows your name. Mm.
or worship the images of gold you have set up. These images never were furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing fire. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent, and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth one looks like the Son of God. And the Kinesa then approached the opening of the blazing furnace yeah. and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out! Come here! Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. Woo! And the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was the hair on their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire. Oh, All right. Woo. Yeah. If you don't mind, and you're not too sacred, All right. look at somebody close to you and say, neighbor, neighbor. Pastor Hampton, Hampton. wants to talk from this song. Now, I want y'all to say this song now. I made it out all right. I want you to look at somebody else who needs me to hear that tonight. Somebody needs me to know that tonight. Somebody needs me to curl me tonight. Look at somebody that says, I'm here. 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 i Father, our God, for the time it allows to share, I pray that you would lower us into the well of your anointing and speak the mysteries of this great gospel for which we are in chat. God, I'm so grateful that you don't mind using a sinner like me to give your powerful word to reach somebody so that they might be saved. But on tonight, God, we need the encouragement. On tonight, God, we need the fortification to know that no matter what we've gone through, when we come to this very moment, we can celebrate with a resounding sound. We made it out all right. Come quickly, Lord. See about your children tonight. In the name of Jesus, we can pray and ask it all. And all the believers said, Amen. Amen. Said, Amen. 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 Preach, Hampton. My brothers and sisters, there is a certainty that I am claiming for you that are under the sound of my voice. Uh -huh. You're closing out the final months of 2019 uh -huh. and the second decade in the 21st century. Uh -huh. You're waiting with expectation the entrance of the 203rd decade that we've seen in this time. Uh -huh. I know not your age and I don't know your historical time. And I don't know how many celebrations of joy that you had. But one thing I know for certain, if you look on your right and your left, that person has celebrated some joy in their life. All right. I don't know how long you've been saved. Uh -huh. 
sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. But I want to tell you, yes, sir. what I do know is, is that if you live any span of time, if you watch the clock tick, uh -huh. yes. uh, you've gone through something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I need y'all to be real with me. We've been here before. Y'all know me and I know you, so let's not go through that verb again. Yes. If I say something real, you say that. If I like yes. you lie, but don't make me feel like I'm lying. If I'm telling the truth, I said if you live some life, uh -huh. you have gone through something. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, as we close this year and decade, uh -huh. is who did you go for it with? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did you go for it with your best friend, your cut uh -huh. Did you go for it with your partner and your pal? Uh -huh. Did you go through it with your parents? Uh -huh. Did you go through it with that person that was always able to get you in something but was never there to help you get out? Of it? Hey! Come on, Pastor. Come on. <laughs> I want to suggest to us tonight that there is one, and the text proof, uh -huh. there is one that sticks closer yes, than yeah. any other. All right. Uh, the focal yeah. point of these young men in our text tonight, referred to as the Hebrew boys, have the proper birthright. They've been born in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. They are children of the Most High God, and they are the chosen children of God. They've been raised under the teaching of the Shema in Deuteronomy 6, they know that the Lord is their God and the Lord is one Lord. Somebody say one Lord. They know that when they get up in the morning, they got to bless God. They know that when they sit at the breakfast table, they got to bless God. They got, come on now. They know when they walk out to go to school or to work or they're praying for their children, they got to bless God. When they come back into the house in the afternoon, don't matter if you get in in the midday or the midnight hour, when you get back in the house, sit down to your dinner table, you got to bless God. And when you bow down at night, before you get ready to go to sleep, you got to bless the Lord. They've been taught to love the Lord their God with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their might. Because the time is going to come, beloved, when you're going to get tried. Come on. Time is going to come when somebody's gone. Pull the okie doke on you. Right. Put you in front of a crowd. You didn't plan on being in front of. Uh -huh. I want to tell you tonight that you're going to be confronted, but you must remain committed to the one God. Right. 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 Daniel 3 15, 13 to 15 demonstrates for us that the believers, when we are committed to God, challenges are going to confront you. Yeah. In 14, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my God or worship the image of gold that I have set up? Can I tell y'all something that I'm saying even in my notes? There's going to be somebody that's going to snitch on you. Somebody that you've been working with, somebody that you've been sharing anything with, somebody you've been sharing a house with, that's going to be somebody that's it's gonna snitch on you. If you just go up to verse 8, you'll find out that the astrologers were mad because they gotten all the promotions, and when they found out that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wasn't gonna bow down and worship, they went and snitched on them and said, King, they ain't gonna do what you told them to do. I guess ain't nobody in here been snitched on tonight. You ain't been snitched on to your job, you ain't been snitched on to your home, you ain't been snitched on in church and it happened to the same individual. Somebody's gonna help you get in trouble. Watch closely to the text. The confrontation comes and it appears when you seem like you're not at your full strength. That's right. What do you mean, Pastor? The only people that are mentioned in this passage, this, this chapter, really are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel's not here. Oh, all right. Daniel's the one that that helped them not to conform in the beginning when they were exiled from Jerusalem and Judah into the land of Babylonia. Daniel is the one that said, we're not going to eat the king's meat, but we're going to eat the vegetables and the good water of the land. Daniel is the one that told the God, don't worry about it. Test us for 10 days, and after you test us, if we don't look better, we'll eat that stuff. But 10 days later, if you know that you stay with the Lord, you can't look no worse. You got to look better, because anytime you get with the Lord, 
he's adding to I can talk about and know tonight that he's doing it in spite of me.
if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God that we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, tell somebody, even if he does not, come on, I need somebody to say it real loud. Even if he does not, we want you to know that we will not serve your God or worship the images of gold you set up. Beloved, as a child of God, there is uh, going to come a time where you got to say no. Come on now. Uh, this, this, this ain't just a drug campaign. All right. <laughs> you got to say no when you live in the same campaign. All right. Amen. Come on. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are living the good life. The good life. Y'all don't hear me. The good life. They live on a healthy diet that the king is supplying them. They got a brand new home that the king has given them. Uh, they have been exiled from Judah, but now living in Babylon, they've been promoted from leadership and elevated to administrate. Come on, come on. They're living the good life. God will lift you up. Somebody said he'll make your enemies your worst Because of your commitment to Christ. All 
right, all right. Thank you, Lord. This ain't even on my notes, but I'm going to give it to you. Go ahead. Right. Stop thinking. Uh-huh. Yeah. All that trouble you was in. Uh-huh. If you joined the church, you was going to be out. All right. Come on. Preach. No. Truth of the matter is, you probably just doubled your trouble. Yeah. 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 Yes, you did. Check says, so these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into a blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firm, listen to this, firmly fell into the blazing fire. Don't miss it now. All right. When you stand in your faith, that doesn't mean your enemies take you when they say they can do something. All right. Uh -huh. When you stand in your faith, some Nebuchadnezzar intend to keep exactly what, what they, they say. They uh -huh. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were fully dressed. Matter of fact, in my eyes, digging that what they had on extra clothes. Uh -huh. It was like a child that's about to get a whoop and put on extra clothes. All right. All right. All right. And yet Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego still were ordered by the king to be thrown into the fire burn. Tell somebody it's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. And I ain't talking about money. All right. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, Confusion is coming. Yeah. Chaos is coming. <laughs> Come on. Come on. It's coming. It's coming. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, it is. Now, when you stand, when you stand, someone or something that believes they have the authority to put you in a struggle, uh -huh. they're going to do it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Can I be transparent with you for a minute? Uh -huh. I struggle right in this point right here. Mm. I struggle because everything that King Nebuchadnezzar promised had come to pass. He besieged Jerusalem, captured them. He made uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel all become a part of his court. Mm -hmm. He elevated, watch this change, built the shader, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And now, in my mind, these brothers are about to jump in a hot sizzling bag. All right! But these three Hebrew boys. Uh huh. Yeah. They didn't trust in Nebuchadnezzar. Uh -huh. They trusted in the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. See, I saw this in the text. Uh -huh. The king called people to put their hands on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Jesus. They didn't fight right. They didn't scream and holler. They didn't struggle. They just walked willingly towards the fire. Willingly allowed themselves to be bound. And keep listening to the text because it says they fell into fell the fire. Into the king kept using people to do what he knew he did not have to do. Y'all, 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 I got you. Days of people followed the orders because Nebuchadnezzar was their king. Uh -huh. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could not follow the orders because Nebuchadnezzar was not their king. I came to ask a question tonight. Who is your king? Who is your king in 2019? You see some kings. Is cancer your king? Is high blood pressure your king? Is diabetes your king? Is alcohol your king? Is lust of the flesh your king? Who is your king? Because if you're serving a king like that, they're going to dress you up, bind you up, and consume you up. But if the king of glory is your king, the king that is strong and mighty, if the king of glory is your king, the king that is strong in battle, you ain't got to fight, you ain't got to fuss, you ain't got to do nothing but sit back and relax, because you don't get thrown into the fire. But hold up, wait a minute, be careful. Those people that put their hands on you, you better look at somebody and say, be careful. You might be putting your hand on the wrong child of God. You don't know who you're touching, and you don't know how God's going to deal with it. Because those soldiers that put their hand on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they got consumed by the fire. This is, I had my struggle, Mike. This is why I had an issue. Because, listen, you mess around and touch the wrong folks.
hope God's going to take care of it. But then these men still kept going on. Oh, I wish we were like the old church. The old church used to say, be still and God will fight your battle. Be still and God will fight your battle. Be still and God will fight your battle. God will fight your battle. If you just be still. And yet you're still on your mission. All right. <sighs> you stood, and yet you're in the middle of a struggle. Wow. But wait. I'm moving towards the end. Don't y'all miss this. Tell somebody that somebody fighting for you. Y'all, 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 come on now. It's right there in the text. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Jesus is fighting for me. The enemy doesn't recognize it. They can't figure out what's going on when they try to put Shadrach, Meshach in the fire and a bit of gold. Oh, there you go. Oh, they got burned themselves. And the mess they got me was they were taking us to a struggle, but they had to deal with a struggle. You're still alive in the middle of your struggle. In 2010, they tried to tear you apart, but you're still here. In 2012, they tried to teach you bad habits, but you're still holding on. In 2014, they tried to make you a fake, but you're still faithful. In 2015, they tried to steal your life, but I'm on the battlefield by my Lord. In 2017, they tried to steal your joy, but this joy that you have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. In 2018, they tried to eat up your flesh, but when the enemy comes upon me to eat up my flesh, he's going to raise up a standard. In 2019, they tried to knock you down. Tell your neighbor, I'm still standing. You, child of God, be committed to Christ. You made your confession of faith. I'm going to move. You accepted your struggle. I don't want y'all to miss this. Because the text says, Pastor Thomas, that the strong soldiers, the strongest that he can find, put their hands on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But they got burned in the fire. That's right. Watch this, Mr. Scott. In my mind, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have turned around. But that would not have given the witness and testimony that God needed out of them. So instead of turning around and going backwards, they fell into the fire. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, just fall in the fire. You don't have to worry about how hot it is. You ain't got to worry about who's in there. Just fall in the fire. If God set it for you, he ordained it for you, don't turn around and circumvent it. Just be faithful to the end. before they got in the fire. Because if he hadn't been with them, they would have got consumed. But he wrapped them up, tied them up, and tangled them up in Jesus so they could walk in the fire and not be worried. Can I help y'all tonight? Walk in your fire. Walk in your sickness. Walk in them evil folk. Walk in them hateful folk. Just keep walking in the fire. And the same thing that bound you, God burns it off, but he don't burn you up. Now, we don't give Jesus credit until we get in the fire. Come on, come on. Jesus kept you before you went to the doctor. Jesus kept you before you got the diagnosis. Jesus kept you before you went to bankruptcy. And Jesus blessed you after bankruptcy because your credit is better now. You are praise God on credit. Your credit is better now that you go through the fire than it was when you were in the home. to walk in the fire. Jesus keeps you in perfect peace. In the fire, Jesus removes the strength of man. In the fire, Jesus reveals himself, not just to you, but to your enemy. 
I believe these three Hebrew boys are the reason that we sing that Andy song. Uh -huh. And he walks with me. Yeah. And he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we walk around and step around in the water. And the joy we share as go talk about us and stab us in our back. And the joy we share as we tear it here. No, no, no. Coming out of 2019. Yeah. You're coming out of 2018. 
And the struggles that you had, if y'all be honest, they did harm some of us. Oh, yeah. 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 I said, Lord, what is the answer? He said, Christ turned to Revelation 20. Mm. Mm. And they overcame. Yeah. Yes, they did. Well, I was having some Bible readers. I wouldn't have to say that. And they overcame. By the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. I'm done. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, everybody stand to your feet. Can we give God a I made it out all right praise? It's 2020. Come on, give God praise. It's 2020. Come on, give God praise. I made it out. I didn't know how I was going to make it through 19, but I'm still here. your seats, feel free to do so. Won't you come? Won't you come? Come on, choir, sing something for us as we prepare for this moment. Won't you come? Won't you come? If you want to kneel at your seat, go ahead and kneel. Come on to the altar. Come on. Come on. Come on. 